Okay, actually for this, water, earth, and sky. Life experience in the conscious mind, earth is the subconscious mind, sky is super conscious mind. Come back here. Water, conscious mind, earth, subconscious mind, and super conscious mind, sky. So these different things. So so like um in the uh, Emerald Tablets of Toth, he talks about uh the, or the halls of Amenti are located in the center of the earth. And he talks about the halls, the halls are triangles. So the center of the earth, earth, superconscious mind, in the very center, like I told you last week, in the very center right here is the Akashic Records. And so, you know, that's what that that's what that line in the uh, Emerald Tablets of Toth represent. Which is e Egyptian culture, um, but you know, and in, in like we'll talk about uh, and learn about, uh, you know, the Bible has it. All these ancient uh, scriptures hold the same knowledge, uh, just in different ways, because you know we aren't as we weren't as connected as we are today. So our understanding and interpretation of of life and you know the Most High and creation and the universe was through our own interpretations as subcultures throughout the planet that are you know, kind of exclusive to yourself. Unless you were like a trader, then you weren't really experiencing anything other than your own culture. But anyways, okay, so fire. Fire, rep fire is, the, uh, is the form. The function of fire is to purify or expand. It'll either, you know, whatever you throw into the fire, it'll be purified into ash, which, you know, ash is a much more pure form, you know, one of the greatest things you can put in your garden isn't miracle grow, it's ashes, fire ash, ash from a fire pit. You know, you throw that in there, it's like, it has so many nutrients and things for the plants. Uh, and then also, if whatever you throw into a fire, it'll expand. You know, if you start a fire on something, it'll expand throughout the rest of it. And so, how does that affect the consciousness? Your expansion of consciousness, your purification of your consciousness. You know, this is, this is why whenever I, uh, any of my mentees or anyone at all, I suggest any type of that concentration exercise or they ask about any concentration exercise, I suggest a candle flame. You know, I'll give them options. You know, you can do like a little drop of water, something real slow, because the nature of the mind is motion. So you want something that moves at least a little bit, but is a little still, still a little still. So a little slow drop of water dropping, bloop, you know, forming, watch it form, and then watch it drop, or, you know, a cloud in the sky that's moving real slow, uh, or a second hand on the clock or a minute hand on the clock, or you can advance up to an hour hand you know but that's really slow might as well be looking at a pen but um the tip of a pen or pencil but anyways fire a candle flame is what i always suggest because not only is it it's very still it's sitting there but it also has a little motion wave to it but it's very still but the purifying effects that it has because what you're doing you're putting your attention on it all over and over and over you're putting your attention on it. so you're putting your attention inside of this fire and so not only is it purifying your attention, but it's also expanding it as well. So it has a lot more effects than just, you know, the drop of water. But on to the next one, air. Air it represents your thoughts. Because just like, just like air, your thoughts, you can perceive it, but you can't really see it, you know, but you can perceive that it's there. Um, so tornado is air just swirling around and around and around really fast in the same spot and causing destruction. So it's like the same thoughts that are just swirling around and around in your mind, creating this inner turmoil, this inner destruction, tormenting you, you know, um, hands, your hands, the function of your hands allow you to have many different purposes. You can do so many things with your hands. I'm over here using the mouse. You can use them to talk. You know, you can use them to uh, build things. You can use them to tear things down. You can use them to comfort someone. You can use them to hurt someone. You know, you there's so many purposes with your hands. So your hands are going to represent your life purpose. You know, anything, actually, you know, both of these, I asked somebody earlier, have a dream where their hands were on fire. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, you're, uh, through following your life purpose, you're expanding your consciousness. You know, so you kind of, that's a way you can see how you're putting these two things together. You know, you're following your life purpose, and so it's expanding your consciousness. And, and, they, and of course, they were like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. This and this is going on your feet your feet are your foundation you know they give you the support and, and keep you rooted you know so with your consciousness your spiritual foundation so your spiritual foundation is mostly like your spiritual beliefs you know those core beliefs uh that you hold spiritually 
the uh, core practices that you have through either prayer or meditation or dream work, you know, um, you know, that's going to also be your spiritual foundation. You know, faces, faces are all about identity. You know, if, if nobody had faces, it'd be so hard to identify anybody. That's why on your ID, they take a picture of your face, <laughs> you know? So uh, some people in dreams will, uh, the people in their dreams will be people that they know, their friends and family. Um, that means they're very self-aware. They're easily able to identify these qualities within themselves. They're very self-aware. Um, you know, some people have dreams where they don't know anybody. They don't know any of the people in their dreams. They're all strangers or it's a mix. But if, if it's all strangers, then then they're, they, they can learn to identify the, the parts of themselves, but they aren't very familiar with them. You know, so they can identify it, but it's not very familiar to them. Um, you know, I, I get some people, and it's a very common thing, it's a misconception, where people will say, um, you know, everybody that you have ever dreamed of is, it, your your brain didn't make that person up, it's someone that you've met in your life at some time, in your, in your dreams, using their face to be a stranger, in your, in the, no, that's not true. <laughs> people are people are coming up with that because, mainly because they're coming from a, a, a perspective that your dreams are a brain experience, you know, and yeah, brain, the brain functions in different ways while you're dreaming, but it's a mind experience. So it's not limited by just who you've come across. Um, kind of absurd. Understand it. But anyways, some people have dreams where people don't have faces. People don't have any faces at all in their dreams. And, and so they, you know, are someone who, they aren't able to identify these parts of themselves. You know, if you, if somebody came up to him like, man, Tony, you're a real asshole. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> or man, you just don't know how to listen. Like what? Well, I know how to listen. You know, they just don't, they have no self-awareness. Um, you know, we all, we all know somebody who just is completely not self-aware <laughs> at all. Um, so eyes, eyes, uh, the function is the eyes of the form, the function of eyes, allow you to perceive things, allow you to be aware of things, allow, uh, uh, allow you a particular perspective. So depending on, on the context of the dream, it'll be one of those three things. Your, your the consciousness, your conscious awareness, your perspective that your consciousness has, your, your, your perception, you know, being able to perceive something. So depending on how that shows up in the dream. And so the same thing is true for like glasses. Glasses will represent the same thing. Um, uh, windows. Windows will also represent awareness because they allow you to see through the walls, limitations. You know? So it allows you to be aware of what's on the other side. Um, binoculars and telescopes, you know, that'll kind of be the same kind of stuff. Anything to do with the eyes, it's going to be these. Flying. Flying represents uh, mental freedom. You know, flying is, you know, not being able to be controlled and weighed down by gravity. So, you know, not, how does that affect the consciousness? Not being weighed down by the stresses that of life that are normally you know weighing you down. So being free of that. Uh, so flying in a dream is kind of going to represent that mental freedom. You know, not being you know being stress free. And like we talked about earlier, death represents transformation. Everything in the dreams about yourself. So it's about self uh, transformation. You no, know? all right. Well, um, you know, feel free to come with some dreams next week or throughout the week. You know, you send me a message and uh, get a dream interpreted. Uh, no problem free that's no problem with me but great uh i enjoyed it and hope you all uh receive some value from it and um continue to you know maybe watch this again or you know really look you know start to look throughout the week this week start to look at just random random images that you come across in your life chair what is it what would a chair that's the form what's the function of a chair um it allows me to sit down okay well why why do i sit down on the chair versus sitting down on the broomstick you know why do i sit down on the chair versus the cardboard box you know, uh, oh, well, it's more stable. It's sturdy. Okay, because it has four legs. It's more sturdy. Oh, okay. Uh, so stability or represents stability. You know, that's why also the number four represents stability. So just kind of assess and look at different things. You know, why, why, what would this maybe represent? And you could be right. You could be completely wrong. It doesn't matter. But just start to try to understand the language some throughout this week. But all right, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. And uh, yeah, see you guys next week.